So Paul, one of the enduring questions in philosophy of biology has been, what is disease? And how, we, how can we distinguish it from normal states? Um, is that project coming along? I think it is. Um, I think the, uh, the one line, uh, there's a one line answer that everybody will agree to. And then we have to kind of argue about how to interpret it. And the one line answer is that a disease is what happens when some part of the organism is dysfunctional when it's not doing what it ought to do. The trouble is that we don't agree on What's how to functional. define ought to do, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Um, and so we can, that's, that's a, if you, you look it up in a kind of, intri you know, first year medical lecture, somebody might well talk about, you know, pathology is impairment of function. And we could all agree on that, and it's a good starting point. Well, uh, Jerry Wakefield, my friend, says not just dysfunction, but harmful dysfunction. What's that harmful ad? Yeah. So. It depends. If you're prepared to say that to be dysfunctional, it's enough to say that human beings don't value you. So dysfunctional traits are things Other that Other people don't value you or you don't value that state or something? Both. 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 So you and your society think that some feature of your body is a really bad thing and you really want to change it. Okay. Then you could say, well, it's dysfunctional. Certainly dysfunctional for me. Um, other people might look at me and say, what a dysfunctional guy this philosophy professor is. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are some people who think, look, that's all there is to the idea of dysfunction. But then there are other people, like Jerry Wakefield, who say, no, actually, dysfunction is something scientists study. When I find a, a new beetle in the rainforest, and I want to know if that beetle is ill, it's not up to the beetle, and it's not up to me. Right. It's up to the facts. Um, and if you define so dysfunction, we're, we're yeah. how can you tell if a beetle in a rainforest is sick? I think you actually have to understand the beetle's ecology and evolution. So you have to start with what's normal. You have to understand why beetles are there. If you don't understand, so suppose there's a beetle and it's got a uh, bacteria living inside the beetle. Mm -hmm. We might say, well, that beetle's got an infection. We need to give it antibiotics. But in fact, one of the big breakthroughs in medicine in the last 20 years is realizing that actually there are a whole bunch of species of bacteria in every organism that are essential to its health, which have evolved with it. They're part of the system. And if we don't understand the biology of the beetle, we don't un understand how it evolved and how it makes its living in the world, we can't really say whether it's sick or not. We've got to do that research. And now we come back to humans and what is disease there are still big controversies here. Mm -hmm. um, how about people with hereditary deafness? Uh, that gets to be quite controversial sometimes. Indeed, and one of the problems with humans is that we don't live in the context in which we evolved. Now, there's no one context in which I think it's a, we don't want to get into the, uh, the Pleistocene diet kind of thing. There's no one context in which humans evolved. Humans have like most organisms, they continually evolve. I think what evolve. he means is there is no environment of evolutionary adaptedness. People have lived in lots of different places. Exactly, and over time, um, many of our traits are best understood by looking deeper in our ancestry. So actually, you want to understand that feature of human beings, you're gonna have to look before humans. And let's go, let's yeah. go, let's but when we come back to the deafness, you want to think about that, you really need to look at how human beings have lived since the evolution of sophisticated cultures. Mm -hmm. I mean. Clearly, if you're making a living as a hunter-gatherer, it's going to be difficult to do that if you don't have all of the sensory information available. If you're a, uh, a brilliant software engineer working for Google, then actually you might not notice in your everyday life, provided the companies provided suitable technology, um, that, uh, that you've got an impairment in one of your senses. So one of the complications is that you've got to ask which which environment are we going to reference this organism to? Um, and, you know, there are, um, for another example in the opposite direction is uh, the ability, there's clearly big biological differences in people's ability to learn to read. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people find it really easy, some people struggle. Mm -hmm. And we know that there, I mean, there are some measured heritabilities for that. So there's some genetic involvement in it. Right. Um, and, you know, we might want to think about that as well in terms of being functional or dysfunctional, even though that's very modern. So things change over time. And one of the problems is working out, you know, which environment do you want to evaluate this with respect to? Let's go on in a minute. That's good. Mm -hmm.